today, I almost feel like putting on my quiet storm voice <laughs> because he is a very cool jazz musician. His name is Nabate Isles. He is a Grammy award-winning trumpeter and composer, and he's here to talk about his brand new album, Eclectic Excursions. Welcome, oh. Nabate. Welcome, oh, Nabate. Thank you. Welcome thank to you us so to much, ladies. Kiss me, Monica. Pleasure. Pleasure to it's be here. It's a pleasure to have you here. Yes, yes. yes. So, I mean, you know, you are not new to the game. You have been in this for a while. Yep. Why did you think now was the right time to come out with your debut album? Well, um, I think uh, the time is right. I think uh, with being inspired to, uh, to release the music that I release all together mm -hmm. because I've written so many different compositions. I've done film compositions. I've done, you know, large ensemble compositions. Mm -hmm. I've done other small group denominations and, and instrumentations and groups mm -hmm. and things like that. Mm -hmm. So um, I felt it was important. Um, now is the time because there's so much more material that I had that really synced, uh, was in sync and mm -hmm. linked like together. The yes, it just it just, uh, it just meshed exactly. perfectly. Exactly, and so it was like, natural. Is, oh, right. nice. it was natural. Nice. It was very natural. So right. and and plus, um, I felt that you know, being a music a professional musician in 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 this business for over 20 years, it mm -hmm. it was time. And and I, I was always feel guilty throughout my 20s and 30s that mm -hmm. I didn't have a record, but. I think no. by the way yeah. this came out mm -hmm. and the way everyone talked about all the musicians talked about the maturity, the the organization, of the process, um, how everything was put together, I think, and also knowing I'm better too with uh, more marketing myself and more uh, being aware of trends and things like that. Just right. not just the creative aspect, but the whole um, organic, uh, organic exposure of the record and right, right. and um, it's it was important now is the time to do it how did, how did you fall in love with music like, oh wow well um, music is funny it was in my household my dad uh, hosted a radio show Richard Isles he hosted a radio show on WBAI oh, um, nice. uh, like during my my years of growing up you know mm -hmm. through elementary school and through middle school and high school so, so, so yeah it was in my, <laughs> exactly, exactly you know um, my warm veins yes indeed um but yeah it was great uh too with with my parents um exposing me my mother was a lot into the motown sound and mm -hmm. a lot into uh quincy jones who i really was my first influence with back on the block uh -huh. That album in the late '80s, right, and, right. And, and and that's what inspired me to do eclectic excursions because Quincy Jones, those records, to do Body Heat, have all that on vinyl, mm -hmm. and I just noticed, I noticed at a young age, when I was 11, 12 years old, I noticed, wow, so many different styles of music, and then it comes full circle. Maybe that was in my subconscious to create an album, create right. a project that Definitely. reflected that years right. later. Right. That's and I mean, amazing. you also didn't just bring in, you know, different styles of music. You brought in a bunch of musicians, different musicians, like at least 20 artists. Mm -hmm. How did you bring all those people together on the same album? Oh, well, well, um, I, I planned ahead, definitely. <laughs> I planned ahead because I knew musician schedules. And then one thing I've always been concerned about in booking gigs with mm -hmm. musicians and things like that, always been concerned about okay is this cat going to be in town is this right. cat going to be in town right. and cat right. is like you know term term Jazz yeah here. exactly yeah. Term dirty, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so um I, you know i would always think to myself will he be in town will she be in town etc cetera, etc cetera. so uh, so i started planning in may of last year mm -hmm. uh, wow. for the album and started to uh that's quick, put it that is that's fast quick. that's like, a quick like, album what? <laughs> yeah oh yeah yeah so 14 months later now wow. yeah, yeah. so you have a you have a whole other album in you i can feel it like oh it's like you're trying to get them out right and, uh, actually it's funny it. it's funny you say that yeah i'm gonna start recording next spring actually yeah yeah so wow. it's it's um call it's, me now <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um so yeah i have so many concepts and ideas that i want to do um mm -hmm. but but uh yeah so i planned um in May and put a budget together, you know, everything. And, and I called people that I've worked with for 10, 15, 20 years, right. good friends of mine that I've worked right. with mm -hmm. uh, that been in my ensembles or I've been in their ensembles or we played in ensembles together mm -hmm. led by other people. So uh, so I called them and they, they were totally on board instantly and pretty much everyone I wanted was available for the record. Right. Yeah, so basically. Great. So yeah. it was like synergy. It yeah. was yeah. just like the right universe time. just lined right. up. Right. What's your favorite track? Like, what's the one that hits home for you? Find Your Light. 
Definitely. I love that song. That's what we're talking about. We're like, that's a beautiful song. Who's that yeah, we're like that. Song stress. Oh. I was like, she sounds Alita? amazing. Alita Moses. Yeah, Alita Moses. Yes, indeed. Oh my God, she's a beautiful voice. I have not yes, heard indeed. a voice like hers before. And she's and she's only twenty four years old. Really? Twenty four. Yeah. She's, wow. She's, 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 her, she's prodigal. Definitely. She's wow. a she's prodigal good. daughter. Yeah. Like you know, the prodigal son, <laughs> prodigal daughter. You know, right. <laughs> definitely. Right. Oh, um, but she's she's great. And and that that was and I, I wrote the lyrics and the music for. for that was gonna be my next. Oh, inspirational. Yeah. Oh, it's thank you. Oh, thank you. Oh, it's shine bright. And, yeah. And you guys have to really, really download this. Please download this. It's amazing. It's just amazing such, music. Such a yeah. blessing. Such mm-hmm. a blessing to create. And it was the first time I wrote lyrics publicly. Really? That was a thing for a really? public, yeah, and and um, it just came to me. What do you mean publicly? You used to write like poems to women. And <laughs> oh, <laughs> well, that, that's who oh, that. No, I'm looking at he's like, and then, yeah, and then also, that. and it was so, and it was funny too. I would um, for if I make a track, I would put verses together, yeah. you know, for the track to rap, kind of like so to give an idea to an artist that I wanted to be on <gasps> what the vibe was about, you oh, know. Nice. So, um, but no, but and also I felt. Who lyrics? Uh, you have so many different great uh, librettists and mm-hmm. lyricists throughout mm-hmm. time. You know, mm-hmm. um, you have all. You know, you have a. Uh, uh, you know. Albert Berg and you know an opera and Richard Strauss and and of course Mozart. You know yeah. all those great librettists and and then you have um, you know of course. Cole Porter and Stevie Wonder, right, 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 right. And, exactly. you know, and 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 great artists like that, you know, Jerome Kern, Oscar Hammerstein, like uh, it just goes on and on. Of course, Leonard Bernstein, you know, mm-hmm. so it just goes on and on. And I just felt, wow, there's too many great lyricists and everything. Oh, and I'm like, Whoa. so you're trying to like compare you, yourself? No, yeah, no, 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 because they, cause they dope, raise though. the bar, and then that's dope. and that's yeah. just like Langston right. Hughes and, right. and Jorge Luis Borges. And, and, and if it's all in your body, you know, mm-hmm. if you if you if you put that inside your spirit, then you want to rise to that kind of occasion. Right. And you, I think you did. I think oh, you hit the mark. Yeah, it's yeah. amazing. We're gonna take a quick break, and when we come back, we're gonna be talking about most deaf and how Nabate had a very interesting way of how he met him. Keep it locked. My new dad teaches me all kinds of stuff. I wouldn't use this one. He helps me with my decision making. Ever. And he's even teaching me how to drive. And that's why cars have bumpers. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of kids in foster care will take you just as you are. Welcome back to What's the 4 and one We were talking to Nabate Isles. This is part two of our interview with him. And he's going to tell us about how he met most death. Traditional light bulbs actually generate nine times more heat than light. Switch to energy saving bulbs. Saving energy saves you money. You worked with a lot of other people too. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, talked about Alita, but you've also worked with Kenny Lattimore. You've worked mm-hmm. with Most Deaf, aka Yasin Bey. Mm-hmm, you worked mm-hmm. with a lot of people. How do you choose the type of artist that you want to collaborate with or? You know, work with in general. Oh wow, that's a good question. Mostly they choose me. You know, usually like oh, wow. so they'll choose me or 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 someone <laughs> or a musical director. <laughs> you know, musical director will choose me for the band to, to be ah, a part of it. Okay. Um. So yeah, it's just all about getting keeping my name out there, and then and then uh, like it's funny with most. I met him. Oh, okay. Funny story. Mm-hmm. I, I okay. I first met him ever on the street. Like I was going to SIR Studios right in Chelsea mm-hmm. doing a rehearsal. Okay. This sound like Brown Sugar. And, right. it, yeah. and, and it was okay. actually at that time. <laughs> it like brown sugar it was me. actually at that time yeah. because literally because remember Brown Sugar came out in oh one. This was oh. May ninety nine. This oh, was wow. right after I graduated okay. from college. Oh, and okay. and and uh, and most was on the street with Buster Rhymes. So he was such a great guy. Buster was 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 cool too, but. Most most really was really um, right, like very like engaged, you know. Yeah, yeah. and okay. then I saw him six months later. Literally, I was walking a train uh, up in Harlem, and they were filming Bamboozle mm-hmm. at the time. And right there, right on my block, I walk up, I see most again, and he remembered me from that meeting that, that, that talk oh, five wow. six months ago because I met you at SIR, mm-hmm. and he was with Buster. And when I said, but he remembered instantly, and and then 
I had in my CD player, I kid you not, black and both black on both sides. The C- really? CD that came out right at that time in October, November of mm-hmm. '99. Mm-hmm. I had that in my CD player, and I showed him. He was like, "Oh, oh you know, yeah, yeah. Right, right. Dis- the disc man <laughs> back God. in the day, like, so, right? It's putting yeah, together yeah, exactly." Nice, nice. And uh, and then we talked about because we we were talking about the Tyson fight as well because they were talking. He was talking about boxing with people, so and I was like schooling them kind of on boxing a little bit, saying you like, "No sports, yeah, right, really right, well. yeah, yes. exactly." So I was saying, "No." The Tyson fight was a good. It was the Diego Corrales fight before that, and they were like, "Oh, that's true, that's true." So yeah, like so I was like, but um, but then most um, then I would see him around throughout the years and stuff, different circles, and then uh, I joined his band with Will Calhoun, the drummer for uh, uh, Living Color, a great great oh, okay. jazz drummer as well. Okay. Um, but overall, you know, overall savant on the drums, mm-hmm. uh, um, had me on in Moses group, and that's when I worked with him, with him for a couple of years. So it's just. Yeah, yeah. Just like you said, eclectic. You know, yeah. some hip hop. You got some R and B. You got everything mm-hmm. like kind of mixed up in there. Yes, yes. So you also like speaking of eclectic, you had some very varied experiences. Mm-hmm. So I heard that you actually played in a band mm-hmm. that played at President Barack Obama White House. Yes, yes. What was that you experience there? like? That was yes. surreal. <laughs> Wait, he was, was in, there. In, okay, the, was in the there. trumpet <laughs> section. In the trumpet section. Yeah. <laughs> he was there. <laughs> in the nice. trumpet section. Yes, and that was the last. That was the last concert of his administration because it was a tribute to Ray Charles. Oh and, um, my gosh! And wow. also prayers to Demi Lovato um, yeah. for yeah. you know. And it seems like she's 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 okay, pulled through. Yeah, you know. But um, she was part of that. And she oh. was so generally nice, like to yeah. all of us and everything. That's why it kind of hit me when I heard that news earlier. Yeah, um, yeah. But yeah, definitely. If you, if you haven't heard, right? Yeah, Lovato, she had an overdose. Overdose. overdose mm-hmm. Yeah. So, um, so prayers go out to her. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, so Demi was part of that with Sam Moore and Usher and Leon Bridges mm. and um, wow. um, 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 uh, Brittany Howard and. And God, so many other. Oh, uh, Jesse Small, Jesse Smollett, oh, wow. and okay. Anthony nice. Hamilton, and uh, Yolanda Adams. Just a list of just, on of all, all, the, the, great, all the great, great people. Yeah. So was that your you first time meeting a lot of those artists for the first time? Yeah, Anthony Hamilton. It was not my first time because we knew each other through a mutual friend years ago. Okay. You know, before he really hit. So. Um, so that was, yeah, I remember, like, it was first when he moved to New York, and then mm-hmm. he moved back out to L.A. before before he moved back out to L.A., so, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, but anyone, no one else I knew, Usher I met once before, but, you know, okay. um, and it was so funny, Usher, I ran into him at a gig I did with Robert Glasper and Jill Scott, mm-hmm. it was an Afropunk gig, mm-hmm. oh, literally Afro-punk. a year later from that uh, concert at the White House, and he was, and I showed him. It was funny. It was a Facebook memory that came up, and, you know, like, and I showed him that, and Usher was like, "Wow, that's right." You know, so <laughs> that was just amazing. really, really, just the weird how the universe and time, right? You know. Exactly, time and this, um, and this music but, is just but, taking you everywhere. Yes, right? it has. Yes, Did it you it travel has. around the world? Oh yes, I have. I yes, have. I've been able. Oh, I've been able to go to Asia, uh, Europe, like seventeen countries in Europe. Uh, four countries in Asia, um, all over the states. You know, mm-hmm. I've probably been to thirty-seven states, around well, thirty-seven, thirty-eight states. Ooh. So, wow. yeah. So, and it's it's been it's been great. It's so, been but wonderful. how do you do that and keep your day gig at Sirius XM? Right? Yeah, Sirius XM NBA Radio. Mm-hmm. Uh, I I do that just by. Um, you know, I might use my vacation days to. <laughs> oh my gosh! Wow. <laughs> so, so you gotta do what you gotta do. I use okay, my vacation days to, hard. to travel, yeah, mm-hmm. and everything. And they're very understanding. They knew um, uh, before I was hired. They knew that I had a, a career in music, and, but but they know that I come in and do my work and and do it at a high level and and mm-hmm. come in with a lot of enthusiasm. Right, so right. yeah. Definitely. Okay. Is there is there like do you ever have to yourself having to choose which one you love more, the executive producing or the music or? Uh, I would say, wow, it's I love both. It's equal, you know. Mm-hmm. Like uh, I love both equal, but but I think music really helps me get out of my my real world or my reality. It gets mm-hmm. me into another zone from the standpoint of like a. A very subconscious. I reach my subconscious more with with creation, with composition, wow. and improvisation. Wow. So, um, but but because you let the spirits lead you, mm-hmm. kind of, yes, right? Yes. The ancestors, right, are, right. Yeah. But with sports, sports is great too, from the standpoint of like uh, you know, just as fascinating the stories of these athletes and the discipline it takes, mm-hmm. and to be a professional athlete, and also 
it's just year round too. It never stops. It's all right. and it's po- it's mostly positive news too. <clears throat> mm-hmm. That's another thing. It's mostly positive news. Instead, I don't watch much news. You know, like news that's emphasized, like you know, the regular world news. It's mostly negative or local news. Mostly negative. Yeah, so, it can get very yeah. negative. You gotta watch the spirit, time. especially yeah. as a creative. Yeah, right? like because you're taking mm-hmm. a lot. You want to keep putting out what's what's uh, most positive. Right. right. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. I so, totally get that. Right. Definitely. Right. Yeah. So I know you know jazz is is you know amazing improvisational you know created by African Americans, really rich in history, mm-hmm. but it's not as popular as it was maybe even like a generation ago. Mm-hmm. How do you engage people who are younger to get mm-hmm. into jazz? Is that even something that you're thinking about or working on? Wow, um, by Eclectic Excursions, having music that that talks about pretty much what it is is that jazz and blues is the, is the root the and the branches are hip hop, right. R and B, yeah. the soul, exactly. the funk. Mm-hmm. Those are the branches, souls, you know. Yeah. Neo soul, exactly. That's all the branches. So, mm-hmm. um, so what I'm what I'm doing with this record was like to really be able to still have that improvisational base mm-hmm. and the roots of jazz, you know, from the standpoint of um, of rhythm and of very involved melody and harmony, mm-hmm. and then being able to still have that feel and groove. Of the modern day music and what's happening now. So where do we find yeah. it? Where do we right. find your music? Like oh yes, well eclectic excursions. Uh, yeah, you can um, get it on, on <laughs> iTunes, <laughs> on iTunes, Google Play, Amazon, Spotify, title. It's everywhere. It's all over us. Uh, digital, all digital um, platforms. How do we find you in social media land? Like, what's your handles? We need to know where to, where to go. <laughs> yes, indeed. Well, my Instagram is nsi dot universal. So n is in Nabate s is the Seku I is an Isles dot universal. N S I dot universal. Universal. Mm-hmm. And okay. then my Twitter is at Nabate Isles S M T A. S M T A. You have to say that louder, guys. So yeah, at Nabate Isles S M T A for we'll so much to talk about. We'll put it down below. Yeah. <laughs> we'll put it down below also, guys. And, and then my uh, my Facebook is Nabate Isles Trumpet. That's my Facebook fan page, and nice. as well as also, I will be having a website that launches next month, yes. um, which is nabateals That will launch. So well, we can nice. follow you on so that. So that's Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, mm-hmm. and uh-huh. then you're gonna be able to follow him on his website. So you guys just look out for him because yes. he's coming through hard and uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's usually how I do. So. <laughs> <laughs> wow. so uh, okay. well, pleasure. Thank, Thank you. you so Thank much. you so much. Pleasure. Oh, pleasure. pleasure. <laughs>